The Wild One, Legends of All Theodore, Chapter 9, A Special Quest. For dinner, Sorrel tried to cook a nice mushroom stew, but Rueni sternly demanded that there were to be no mushrooms in any part of her food. As she did, she shot a particularly fierce glare at a bright green cap Sorrel had found earlier. Was this one poisonous, then? Oh, such a shame. It tasted amazing. He settled for a boring stew with some bread to dip into it on the side. I'll probably have to take another job soon, Sorrel muttered. We're almost out of supplies already. Does guild work bother you that much? Rowena asked. Not really. It's just the idea that's annoying. Too many steps. The idea is annoying? Rowena repeated incredulously. You mean earning money? Is that the real reason you didn't steal money? That, and it's too dangerous. I could steal a new pair of shoes, and most people won't even notice they're missing, Sorrel explained, but if I stole money to buy those shoes, it would attract immediate attention. Sorrel thought the concept was pretty self-explanatory, but Rouenet's expression as she stared at him said otherwise, so he decided to change the subject. I'll go visit the guild tomorrow to see what I can find. Remember to let me know about your options this time, Rouenet warned. There are probably a lot of things that are more dangerous than it may seem at first glance. The mind snakes had definitely been more of a hassle than Sorrel had expected, but not because of lack of info. He just hadn't thought things through. If Jazz hadn't been there, who knows what could have happened? He promised Ruene he would make a full report of possible jobs and quests. He wanted to choose a nice high-paying one if he was going to go through all the effort for this money thing. The next morning, he headed off early, perhaps a bit too early, since the Belayus Guild didn't seem to have much traffic yet. Ruene had made Sorrel sleep that night, but he'd only managed to get a few hours before the nightmares woke him up again. When he tried the handle, the door was unlocked, and luckily he saw a familiar face arranging some chairs at the tables. Grace, he remembered. That was her name. Her head snapped up when her name was spoken, and she locked eyes with Sorrel. Sorrel? Isn't it a bit early? It's fine, he said and hesitated. Is there any way I could meet Cybel Toll? I promised him I would tell him about something. You've already met him? she asked in surprise. Give me a moment. I'll see if he's free. She hadn't said anything about him not being there, so that was a good sign. Sorrel waited somewhat impatiently for Grace to return. He heard footsteps down the hall, but rather than Grace, Seibel himself came into view with a broad smile. Have you finished already? he asked with some excitement to his voice. It took me months to invent my first magic. It isn't that great, Sorrel admitted. I just combined a bunch of stuff I already knew about. That is how creation works, Seibel replied, not disappointed in the slightest. Why don't you join me in my office? Then we can discuss things in more detail. Sorrel followed him into his office with a bit of his own excitement beginning to surface. He had thought maybe Seibel would be proud, but the genuine enthusiasm the man showed was far more rewarding. So what magics did you combine, if you don't mind explaining? Seibel asked once the door was closed. I don't mind, Sorrel told him, then began to explain. Have you ever heard of portals? I have. Are you saying you've mastered them? Sorrel paused at the word mastered. Maybe. I can use them, at least. So you used portals to make your new magic work? Seibel prompted. Yeah, basically. I have a portal in my pocket now, but it only opens under certain conditions. Seibel listened intently, muttering softly to himself conditions as well impressive i knew i was right about you sorrel happily continued explaining i wasn't sure at first how to grab the items i put in so i also attached a kind of summoning magic i have to know the basic location of the item to summon it for now at this point seibel connected the dots that safe place you asked about last time he realized is that connected to your pocket it is sorrel confirmed incredible cyber whispered then grinned this is far more impressive than I ever expected for a first try, especially this soon. Thank you for sharing this new innovation with me. Did you want to know how mine works? Really? You'll tell me? Sorrel asked. Yes, but I'm afraid it's far less impressive than yours. It was simply a bag with expanded space, no organization, no summoning magic or safe space portals. Seibel seemed very amused by the vast difference in Sorrel's creativity. I don't even know if I could fully recreate what you have, but I will certainly try. Sora was shocked. The magic bag that had been his obsession for the last few days was just that? Just a big bag that looked like a little bag? 
He felt oddly cheated, but he'd gotten something amazing out of it. Now, I don't imagine you came here this early in the morning just to show me your fancy new pocket, Seibel said, shifting the attention of the conversation. Is there anything I can help you with? Actually, I was going to look for a job, Sorrel answered. Something interesting, but not dangerous, and hopefully with a good reward. Quite the greedy condition, Seibel chuckled, but I think I may have the perfect job for you. This one is a bit more personal, but I will pay you generously. And now is about the time for the festival in the capital. Festival in the capital? What did that have to do with a personal job? What kind of job is it? I need you to deliver a very important package to the capital branch of the guild for me, Seibel said. With your new pocket, no one should be able to steal it from you, and I think seeing the festival would be good for you. It would, Sorrel asked, trying to imagine what kind of festival he could possibly be talking about. Have you ever heard of the Elgrove Magic Festival? Seibel asked. No, what's an Elgrove? Seibel's smile fell slightly if to a look of concern. Sorrel, Elgrove is the name of this kingdom, he told him. Surely you know the name of this town, right? Sorrel looked away, suddenly filled with an odd sense of guilt. Rouenne probably knew, but he'd never bothered to learn. A town was a town. He would usually leave soon anyway, so it didn't matter. This is Evergreen, Seibel informed him, interpreting his silence correctly. And you would be taking the package to Sycamore, the capital of Elgrove. That's a lot of trees, Sorrel couldn't help but comment. The founder of this kingdom believed trees were sacred, Seibel replied. That belief was not passed down, but the various tree-associated locations remained. That sounded a bit odd to Sorrel, but the half the town was in a forest, so being part of some tree-related kingdom wasn't that unexpected. What sort of package will I be delivering, he asked, trying to shake off the strange thoughts of sacred tree mythology. Seibel opened a cabinet and took out a box containing a lot of papers. He chuckled at Sorrel's visible disappointment. It may not look too exciting, but this is the research and information our explorers have gathered. I always send copies to the Capital Branch to further the spread of information. Why would anyone steal this? Sorrel asked. Information is valuable, Seibel replied. Perhaps this information isn't of interest to you, but I am not without competitors. I'll think about it, Sorrel told him, remembering his promise to Rouenne. There's no pressure to accept, Seibel assured him, but try to let me know by tonight. It will take me a while to find someone else if you refuse. Got it, Sorrel replied and headed out. He almost went for the window before he caught himself and left properly through the door.